This video is the simple layman's explanation of our challenge to the United States government. It is time the world recognized that there is a connection between the sun and earthquakes. In just a few minutes, you'll be an expert and recognize why this topic is a must investigate for the world's experts. The sun has many types of magnetic fields. Small ones you can see here as the bright loops above active areas on the sun called sunspots. These small fields are actually bigger than Jupiter, but they are small in terms of the sun. There are larger fields, which you can see in blue, which arch through the solar atmosphere but leave openings for those other fields you see streaming away in red and green. Those are the biggest of the sun's magnetic fields and by far the most important. Not only do they control the smaller fields and solar phenomenon like solar flares, but they are interplanetary magnetic fields, which as their name suggests, means they stream out through the solar system and indeed connect the planets to the sun with electromagnetic field tubes according to NASA. They stream out through and on the outsides of a rippling electric field of particles emitted by the sun called the solar wind current sheet. These things affect the planets a lot. And when it comes to the planets, the only solar magnetic fields that can actually reach out and touch them are those interplanetary ones. And it just so happens that Stanford University's Wilcox Solar Observatory has been measuring and keeping the data on how powerful those fields on the sun actually are. They measure the strength near the north, which will be blue in this video, and also for the south, which will be red in this video. We have plotted the magnetic strength as kept by Stanford. It is important to know that when looking for the strongest magnetism, you don't just look at the peaks upward, but the ones downward on the bottom too. Since these are magnetic fields, they can be measured as positive up or negative down. But apart from having to look for spikes in both direction, it's as simple as looking for the highest magnetic force. But there is one other thing we have to look for. The center line is zero, where the positive-negative magnetism reversals occur. These are also important, and you might say, why would such a small distinction matter at that low of magnetic strength, say, positive one versus negative one? Well, change of direction makes a great difference. You could apply 10, 100, 1,000, 100,000 pounds of pressure on that boulder away from the cliff, and you might not move it very far. But how much would it take to send it tumbling the other direction? Maybe not so much, and the eventual movement would be quite great. So that's what we want to look for, the strongest magnetic field moments, the peaks up and down, and the reversals of polarity where these things cross that center zero line. I've also plotted the total magnetic field strength offered by the sun in yellow. That combines the north and south and gives us one single line for the total solar magnetic field exposure. This is more than 40 years of data. And although it looks like we have a lot of places to look, each of those waves is about one full year. So the important times come round every hundred to hundreds of days. Keep those long stretches between important times in mind as we come right into what we hope your eyes will plainly see. 2010 through 2013. Let's find the largest earthquakes during this period. Despite months between the major important points in magnetic field strength, from left to right, we find an 8.8 .8 in Chile, five days after both the south, red, and total yellow solar magnetism peaked in force upward in the positive direction. The next couple all correspond to that same magnetic peak. The Japan earthquake of 2011 happened two days after that peak. The two Sumatra rumbles in 2012 came nine days after the peak. The eight-pointer in the Solomon Islands striking on the day the data shows the peak occurred. And on the right side, that 8.3 was a tremendous rumble that may have actually been much bigger, and it happened as the red line plunged into a reversal, the only magnetic reversal it had this cycle, and they usually have more than one. Not that hard to see, right? Let's try your luck at the start of the data, see if I can trip you up there. You know, if I didn't have the earthquake information annotated on there, you'd probably say that those lines were pointing at times when magnetic field strength was peaking on the left, then a reversal of the total solar field exposure, followed by another peak in strength, and reversal on the far right. 
However, you know, of course, that those are in fact simply the largest earthquakes of this time period. The time frames between significant events on the Sun and Earth here are 7 days, 7 days, 5 days, and 1. As you look through the timeline of our original work, which went up through 2013, you see the date, earthquake magnitude, location, and then the number of days away from the solar polar fields event of significance in the fourth and fifth columns. Not every quake hits the mark, but we certainly are not suggesting all quakes are triggered by the solar magnetic fields. There are way more than hit within just a few days that do not, and way more than one would need to say, hey, maybe this isn't a coincidence. Let's look at some of our misses, though, and ask ourselves just what are we seeing. From 1994 to 1996, we saw four magnitude 8 earthquakes in a row fall 19 to 21 days after the solar polar fields events of significance. That is way longer than most of the others, but not only are the times after event about the same for each, a little less than three weeks, but look to the right column. They were all with peaks and positive magnetic strength. Let's take a look at this, shall we? So we already know we need to find the magnetic peaks upward during this time. So there's one, then the next year we had a double peak, and then as it should have gone down, it came back up sharply for one more and broke the cycle, which should have seen that curve continue downward. Oh geez, this is what our model decided was a failure. Some sort of delay on the scale of just under three weeks has seen those four major quakes in a row wait a bit after the magnetic peaks to rumble, and one peak with one quake, two peaks with two quakes, random anomaly, another quake. Maybe this isn't a coincidence. Now a smart individual might say, that is a coincidence, a lucky four among the misses, and without more like that, we should just ignore it. Okay, well, after the model dominated for years more, there, another failure streak, three in a row this time, again with just about a three-week delay. And again, there seems to be a pattern with the type of solar polar field event causing these as well. Bear in mind, these last two scenarios laden with coincidences that shouldn't be ignored would be what our model considered a failure. The gold here is all the quakes that strike within just days of the major solar events. However, they happen too far apart for this many earthquakes to occur right alongside them. There are only major earthquakes about once a year or so, and that further makes this pattern relevant. So shall we continue? 2015 was a lot of fun, so we've stretched it out here. Those up and down lines represent six of the eight largest quakes of the year. Two of them are at the green line, which is why you only see five lines. There are no reversals during this period, so we can only look for spikes up and down. Peak, quake, peak, quake, peak, quake. Maybe this isn't a coincidence. Again, we are definitely not saying all quakes hit these marks, but 75% of them did in 2015, and that is post-original model publication, aka a prediction confirmed. Now going back to that black graph, you can see those five lines, aka six of the eight great quakes of 2015. We're only halfway through 2016 so far, and we've had only a negative polarity peak downward of both the total in yellow and southern magnetic fields in red. Both curves are done peaking for the cycle and are going back up, and the two largest earthquakes of the year so far were 7.8s that struck Sumatra and Ecuador, right on the dot with when Stanford's data says those field peaks occurred in the negative. So our challenge is this, Jeffrey Love, we call you and your U.S. government organization, the USGS, to greatness. Unlike these moments in the movies, your village hasn't been pillaged and you don't have to go fight any dragons. Instead, you have positioned yourself as earthquake authorities and previously stated the sun can't cause earthquakes. Now all you have to do to be heroes is your jobs. People of Earth, stand up and demand action to recognize this science and push it forward. It can save lives. You don't need to be a physicist or a geologist or anything of note to see the patterns here. Demand we take that first step towards saving lives.